Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how a securely attached person might react to being ghosted. So this is something that was requested by so many individuals after I did that little ghosting series in terms of like the root causes of why different attachment styles have a tendency towards ghosting if in fact they do do something like that um, and how to really understand it so you can gain some closure and, and depersonalize it really and, and not make it mean that you're less worthy because somebody did something like that. So I'm going to tell you seven key things that a securely attached person does. Um, and this doesn't mean every securely attached person reacts this way. This is like your optimal, like ideal sort of response. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about why and how the brain sort of would work of a securely attached person in the specific dynamic or situation. So before I dive in, please know we are partway through our month, I guess probably by the time this video is released, it'll be like most of the way through the month. Um, and our lifetime membership access, it's 50% off right now. Um, it's gonna come to a close soon, so please check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. And of course, during this whole crazy time of change and 2020 year in and of itself, I know it's been such a, a sort of roller coaster for so many individuals worldwide. And so as long as that stuff's up and happening, then we are doing a sale to support our community, giving 25% off of our membership bundles um, for three months, six months, 12 months, as well as um, uh, a single course purchases. <laughs> so we have all of that running. Um, the coupon code is with you. You can put a link, the, I'll put a link in the description box below and on this video if you wanna access it. And that basically gives you access to the entire um, memberships. So you get all 35 or so plus courses, um, 100 and something, probably 160 or 70 by now, um, webinars from the past on a whole bunch of different topics, as well as ongoing four live calls a week, access to our group Discord channel, chat channel, and really there's an amazing online community there of like-minded people. So a really good thing to do if you find yourself in a little bit of isolation, and we're also offering scholarship options. Um, so you can also contact my team at info at personal development school.com and um, join in there if that's helpful for you. So let's talk about this. So first and foremost, what do securely attached people do if they're ghosted? One of the first things you're going to see is that they don't make it mean something bad about them. And this is so important. And this is so important for any time something painful happens in a relationship or if somebody does something that feels disrespectful or uncomfortable or just isn't a nice thing to do. And what often takes place in the mindset of an insecurely attached person is because they have prior wounding when it comes to relationships. And because those wounds usually, at least a good bunch of them, probably occurred at a time where the mind wasn't developed enough, the prefrontal cortex wasn't developed enough to be able to logically assess the situation and go, oh, my caregivers aren't showing up. It's not about me. It's because they're emotionally unavailable or it's because they're going through a hard time, because we couldn't recognize that, the childhood mind personalizes. And so once we're used to doing that and making pain from other people mean something bad about us, then we're very likely to reproject it, not only because it's a subconscious comfort zone, but because usually if we have a program in the first place that came from a pain point in a past relationship, usually we believed that for so long, we bought into that. So for example, you know, maybe you grew up in a family with two critical parents and maybe you made that mean, I'm not good enough. Not, oh, my parents are trying to push me because they're afraid of me not succeeding in life. Or they are trying to um, push me because they were pushed and that's how they know how to relate. Instead of creating some kind of distance or separation, usually it's just like, whoa, I'm not good enough as a person. And then the moment somebody does something that, that makes you feel some kind of similar pain, your subconscious opens its filing cabinet and goes, oh, we know what this is. This is because you're not good enough. And it's really easy for the mind to reproject that old pain point and piece of meaning, A, because you've been buying into it, B, because it's a subconscious comfort zone, and C, because that's how you originally made sense of the world. And, and that gave you some kind of certainty or security to know that this is the reason, even though that may not be the case whatsoever. And so, you know, when, when a securely attached person, for example, has less core wounds, 
then they're less likely to do that. And it's also not a comfort zone. And it's not the way that they perceive their world. They go, oh, there either wasn't a match in the relationship and we're not compatible. And they felt that before I did, or, or they had things that they just didn't feel were compatible with me and, and not everybody's supposed to be compatible. And then they didn't show up well in a good way to communicate that because whatever's going on in their life and in their programming. And they may not like have that full exact thought process, but there's definitely an absence of otherwise. There's definitely an absence of like the, what we were talking about before the, oh, it's because I'm not good enough that they ghosted. Oh, it's because I'm not worthy or I'm undeserving of love. There isn't that painful meaning that they generally get. So that's a really important first point. Number two, they prioritize advocating for themselves over saving face. So this is a big pattern I've seen because securely attached people get ghosted too. You know, these things happen in, in relationship dynamics. A securely attached person won't be there and be like, oh my gosh, what should I do to not seem silly or to, um, to try to win? It's not going to be like, oh, should I try to win them back? Should I try to save face? Should I try to reach out, but what will they think of me if I reach out? Should I not reach out? But what will they think of me, of me if I don't reach out? They'll be like, what do I need? This is unfortunate. I don't feel good. What would make me feel better? And they don't take what somebody else will think into consideration because they recognize inherently that they deserve more and they're worthy of more. And so they're showing up to advocate for themselves, irrespective of the outcome or the output, irrespective of trying to you know, win somebody back in the dynamic or situation. And this is another extremely important point. And this brings us to point number three, which is then they'll communicate if they want to. And they, they might just decide within themselves, no, 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 that's about them. I don't even want to talk to somebody who's done something like that. And I'm good to set a boundary there. But instead, if they want to communicate and say, Hey, what you did is not cool. I didn't appreciate it. And, you know, please don't think about reaching back to me again in a few months. Or they might just say, Hey, I wish you the best. Just wanted to send this for closure. I didn't think it was cool what happened and the way that this ended. But I feel that it's important for me to have closure. So I'm sending this message. Like, whatever form it takes, they will decide what's right for them, what they feel, what they need, and then they'll communicate if need be. And again, without being attached to the outcome because it's not about trying to win somebody back or gain the connection or fill the abandonment wound or not good enough story or um or aloneness that they might feel because they don't have a lot of those wounds to the same degree in the first place okay and please remember if you're hearing this and you're like whoa that's such an interesting perspective you know this is all the wounds that we have all the stuff those things are reprogrammable and like once you identify them and isolate them, you can do the work and reprogram this, those things so that these become your natural ways that you show up instead. And literally inside of the school, we have like super, super detailed systems and workbooks and support mechanisms to teach you how to reprogram as fast as possible so you get the results that you're looking for extremely quickly. Um, you don't have to waste a whole bunch of time trying to sort of figure all the pieces out for yourself. So keep that in mind. So number four, um, they don't let this imprint them and they don't carry this with them as like, oh, either everybody's like this or I'm not good enough for anybody. So like they don't take this ghosting experience and go, oh my goodness, now I'm going to reproject this onto everybody and I can't trust anybody not to do this. Or I'm going to walk on eggshells so this never happens again. Or, oh my gosh, I should be ashamed of myself because this happened. They don't take any of that. They realize, which is the truth, that if this happened, it's about the other person and the stuff that they're going through. It's not about your experience on the inside from that perspective. And this is a really important thing to remember, okay? Number five, they won't hold resentment about it. They won't go and be bitter or angry or, or um, you know, holding on to this three years later, looking back, they're gonna be like, okay, things ended that way. It's part of life. But because they're not giving it meaning and making it mean painful things about themselves, they're significantly less likely to be resentful as a byproduct. And that's another extremely important point to remember, okay? And the last two are, are that they don't, um, um, they not that they don't, they allow themselves to grieve um, and they don't internalize or create a shameful story about themselves because of the experience, which is sort of what we're touching on from before. It's like, they're not gonna say, oh, because this person did this, this determines my worth and this makes me less worthy. They're gonna go, oh, because this person did this, they had stuff going on and that's their business. And so um, they won't shame themselves because of this experience and they grieve. Like if they wanna share with their friends or talk about how it sucks or share their feelings or something like that, they're going to, and they're gonna recognize that this is a natural, normal part of the healing process. 
And very lastly, they will allow themselves to move on and they won't likely take this into future relationships. And so they won't let this change their behavior in future relationships or um, think that, oh my goodness, because that happened, I have to go change myself as a person so that this doesn't happen again. They won't let this minimize who they are and how they feel about themselves, which is sort of this big theme throughout here, you can see. So I hope this all makes sense. Um, I thought this was a fantastic video idea. So thank you everybody who asked for this. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of this channel. And I will see you in the next video.